explain what the bullwhip effect is and why it's important in supply chain management? The bullwhip effect is a very common phenomenon in all supply chains. What it is about is the amplification and the distortion of demand information. So as you observe in the market where demand can fluctuate a small bit, but as every player in the supply chain makes decisions based on forecasting, inventory control, speculations, all those interactions resulted in demand forecasts and orders being amplified. So as you go up the supply chain, you see much bigger swings in orders compared with the market. And why are they calling this the bullwhip effect? Well, here is a graphical depiction of what a bullwhip is. Here, I'm holding a bullwhip. And as you can see, the bullwhip has a long, long arm. And as I crack the whip, watch out for my handle. So the handle has only moved 60 degree, while the tip of the whip has moved more than 360 degrees. And that's exactly what happened. The market may have moved a tiny bit, but as it, the demand information traveled up the supply chain, your upstream suppliers may be seeing a much, much bigger swing. And that is costly, and that makes life difficult for your suppliers, because as distortions happen so much bigger in magnitude, it makes it difficult for you to plan production, plan inventory, capacity planning, transportation planning, and it's more costly as a result. Some of you may not have seen a blue wheel and on campus, uh, it's easy for me to not have to like, travel. These days I do not carry a real blue wheel with me to travel. But on campus, I can have a real wheel to show you. So this is my blue wheel. <laughs> Teaching to me is a, an extremely fun, rewarding, and productive experience. Because when I teach, I found myself inevitably sharing my passion of the subject with the students. And it's through those passions that stimulated the classroom, that motivated the students to participate. And the participation enriched the class experience for everyone, myself included. And I found that by that passion and energy put into the classroom, the intellectual content would come across much easier. And the students all contributed and participated as a result. And this becomes a co-learning environment. And that's the best way to learn. Can you talk about what you've contributed to broadening the field to uh, a, a kind of a broader holistic perspective? In the early days, most people look at supply chain as if this is about logistics. It's about trucking, about uh, ships and transportation, warehousing. But I think today, as a result of all these years of research efforts by myself as well as my colleagues, we have expanded supply chain to include channel marketing, information integration, product design, design of processes, accounting systems, economics in terms of incentives, and so this broadening of disciplines resulted in supply chain being a multidisciplinary research area. Over your career, how have you tried to link theory and practice? For instance, have you ever worked in industry aside from academia? Supply chain management is an area of research that requires very tight collaborations and integrations of theory and practice. Many of the 
new ideas and inventions actually happened in industry while practitioners were pursuing uh, new ways of running their supply chain. I emphasized very, very importantly the need to work closely with industry, starting with my first sabbatical at Stanford when I went to work uh, at Hewlett Packard uh, as a full member in their supply chain team, trying to understand what HP was experiencing in their supply chain problems, all the way to the setup of the supply chain forum at Stanford, which tried to invite industry members to collaborate, exchange ideas with uh, academics as well as among each other. So this continuous interaction between industry and academics is the key for moving supply chain practice forward. We've done a lot of work related to China, and China is now the world's biggest manufacturer. Can you just talk a little bit about the progress China has made in um, improving supply chain management and why, why it's so important? China has traditionally been a very major part of supply chain, but the contribution has been mostly in manufacturing. Most people thought of China as the factory of the world. But in recent years, many companies have recognized that China is also a market. China is also a source of innovation so that when they develop products and designs, they can leverage the potential power of many of these supply bases because they are more than your manufacturing partner. That's why Stanford has gone to China together with Fudan University in Shanghai under the sponsorship of Cisco to create the Supply Chain Leadership Institute. The idea is to continuously train executives in China so that they would run their supply chain more than just manufacturing, but at the same time, allowing us to use that as a vehicle to learn about the development in China, to partner with our Chinese institutions to create new cases and new research ideas, because China is going to be a source of the supply chain in manufacturing, in design, in innovation, and ultimately as a market. And how is China progressing? Do you think its supply chain management is improving? China has a lot to learn uh, in terms of the executives uh, there. They, of course, has been an excellent manufacturing partner for many, many industries. They have great factories and they have great know-how in controlling cost. And they're just starting to learn how to integrate themselves as part of a bigger supply chain, all the way from product innovations design to the end distribution. And that end-to-end -end concept is new to many people in China. So that's why I think they still have a way to go, but they recognize that. And I think that is definitely the direction. While multinationals also should recognize that China is more than your manufacturing partner. And if that is the approach that we take, I think everybody would be better off. Eventually, it could be a win-win for everyone. And why are emerging economies in general so important in your work? Emerging economies has become a very key and integral part of my work because as supply chains become more and more globalized, we are beginning to see many of these new economies becoming part of the supply chain of many, many industries. Uh, they are a part of your supply sources. They are a part of your manufacturing. They are a part of your assembly. And in some cases, they are becoming part of your market. So we need to learn how to integrate them. And yet, at the same time, these emerging economies, some of them are new. Some of them still do not have their social responsibility structure in place. Some of them also do not have as rigid laws on protecting the environment. And so as my research migrates to emerging economies, it's increasingly important that we also capture the other aspects of running an efficient and profitable supply chain which is to look at the environmentally and socially responsible dimensions of supply chains. What is the future direction of your work? As a result of this globalization and the need to look into emerging economies and how to make them an integral part of the global supply chain, my future research will center significantly on how these emerging economies can progress in a business sense, but at the same time, recognizing that we want to help to preserve their environment. We want to help to make sure that they are socially accountable and responsible to their communities. And companies that are leveraging the economies there 
as part of their supply chain, also would pay attention to the environment and the social responsibility there. So together, we're building a more sustainable world, a sustainable world that would be extremely profitable and efficient in the supply chain sense, but hopefully also contribute to the sustainment of the environment. And that's my research goal in the next few years.